This is section 7.1 and we're looking at integral as net change. In example 1 we're interpreting a velocity function. We have ds over dt equals v of t equals t squared minus 8 over 2 plus 1 squared in centimeters per second of a particle moving along a horizontal s-axis for 0 to 5 seconds. Describe the motion. Well we're going to use our calculator to find the left, the right, and the stop. So we're going to describe the motion uh, with these three, three things and we have stopped so uh, let's look at here's the graph and I've entered the the function into the calculator there's the function I've set the window from 0 to 5 on the x-axis because we're looking from 0 to 5 and on the y I've gone from negative 10 to 30 with uh, intervals of 5 so when we graph it we have this function here well we can see that we're going to the left from 0 to the 0 of the function and then right from the zero all the way to five. So we need to find this zero right here. Our calculator will do that for us. Here's zero. I need to get to the left of the zero. Enter, and I need to get to the right of the zero. There's the right bound, and I'll back up a little bit, and the guess is about right there. And we see that it is uh, 1.255. So left, let's say stopped from at uh, x, or t equals 1.255. We're going left from 0 to 1.255. And we're going right from 1.255 to 5. In example 2, suppose the initial position of the particle in example 1 is s of 0 equals 9. What is the particle's position at t equals 1 second and t equals 5 seconds. Well, we're going to use our calculator to do that. Let me turn it on here. Uh, we can quit out of there. We'll go math and we're going to integrate f and i and t. Uh, I'm not going to re-enter the equation because I have it in y1 so I'm going to go to variables over to y variables and the function is in y1 so I'm going to integrate y1. Now notice that it says s of 0 equals 9, so we're starting uh, at 9. We're not starting at 0, so I'm going to integrate this. We're on the variable x, and our first one is for 1 second, so we're going from 0 to 1, and we get an answer of negative 3.66. Remember, uh, it was going backwards uh, at the beginning. Uh, if we Let's see if the graph is still up here. See, we're going backwards from 0 to 1 second the entire time. Let's go back to the main screen. We have negative 3.666, but this is saying that the position is starting at 9, not at 0. So we need to add 9 to this, and our answer is 5.333, or 5 and a third. So to letter A, 5.333. On letter B, we're going from 0 to 5 seconds. So I can go second entry twice and change this from 0 to 1 to 0 to 5. There's the displacement. Let's, let's let it work. The displacement is 35, but again we started at 9, not at 0. So we need to add 9 to this. So the answer to letter B is 44. 44 and this is, uh, what was it? Uh, I believe it was centimeters. So both of these are centimeters can't forget the label. In example 3 we're calculating the total distance traveled. Find the total distance traveled by the particle in example 1. Now we're going to use the absolute value uh, with our calculator to find the total distance traveled. If we look at the graph we have some negative area to the left of the zero and positive area to the right of the zero. Well we want to make this negative area positive to get total distance traveled not the net and we can do that by taking the absolute value of the function. So we're going to integrate because we want to find total distance traveled. But we want to go back into math and do the absolute value of y1. So now go into uh, variables, y, y1, right there. We have the absolute value of y1. It's still in x. And we are going from, find the total distance traveled. So we're going from 0 to 5 seconds. Enter. So the total distance traveled is 
42.587 centimeters. 40, 42.587 centimeters. Example 4 says modeling the effects of acceleration. A car moving with initial velocity of 5 miles per hour accelerates at the rate of a of t equals 2.4 t miles per hour per second for 8 seconds. How fast is the car going when the 8 seconds are up? Well, let's remind ourselves that v of 0 equals 5. We're going to have to use that later because it says the initial velocity is 5 miles per hour. On letter A, let's think about the graph of the acceleration function. It is a line and has a slope of 2.4 and it passes through 0, 0. So it's passing through 0, 0 and we'd have to go up 2.4 and over 1 and here is the function right there. Now that's the acceleration function. That's A of t. This is seconds down the bottom and this is miles per hour per second. That's what it says right here, miles per hour per second for 8 seconds. And it says how fast is the car going when the 8 seconds are up. So we need to find the displacement of the velocity. So we're going to integrate from 0 to 8 the acceleration function which is 2.4 t dt which is going to be, well we're going to increase the power by 1 and that's going to be 1.2 out in front. We're going to evaluate this from 0 to 8. Well if we plug 0 in we're just going to get 0. So now I really just have to worry about plugging 8 in. So we need 1.2 times 64. 1.2 times 64 and that's going to be 76.8. So we have 76.8 and when we multiply the miles per hour per second times seconds, remember this is area under the curve, it's like taking length times width, the seconds are going to cancel out and we're going to, we're going to get exactly what we want. We want miles per hour. But remember the initial velocity was 5, so this answer is actually going to be plus 5, which is 81.8 miles per hour. The 76.8 was the displacement, but we had initial velocity of 5, so that's why we have to add 5 to this answer. In letter B, it, say, it, it says, how far did the car travel during those 8 seconds? Well, that is going to be the displacement of, uh, of uh, the position, so how far did this travel? Well, we have the velocity function sitting right here. We just don't need the c when we go from 0 to 8. So the velocity function is 1.2t squared but plus some c. Well, we're given the initial velocity. So we know that v of 0, v of 0 equals 5. So if I plug 5 in for v of t and 0 in for t squared, this would say c equals 5. So the velocity function is 1.2 t squared plus 5. We're going to integrate that from 0 to 8 to find the displacement of the object of the car. Uh, so we have to integrate 1.2 t squared plus 5 dt which is 0.4 t to the third plus 5 t and we're evaluating that from 0 to 8. Well once again each of these has a, a, a t in it so we're not going to really have to worry about the 0, we just, we just have to worry about the 8. So I'm going to grab the calculator to do this last little bit. We have uh, 0.4 times 8 to the 3rd, and then plus, well, 5 times 8 is 40. And we have 244.8, 244.8. But let's look at the graph of velocity. Well, the graph of velocity is, uh, a per, uh, let's see, the velocity function is a parabola right here and has a y-intercept of 5 and it would look something like this for 0 to 8. Well, this is seconds and this is miles per hour. Well, the label for this now is miles uh, per hour but then times seconds and we're going to have to get this to just miles. We have to eliminate the hours and the seconds. Well, one hour is uh, 3600 seconds. So I have to take my answer and divide by 3600 to find out how far the car went in 8 seconds. 
Let's see, we have the 244.8 divided by 3600, and we ended with 0 .068 miles. So the answer to this is 0 .068 miles. And that might be a little off the screen. Uh, 0 .068 miles. In example 5, we have potato consumption. It says from 1970 to 1980, the rate of potato consumption in a particular country was C of T equals this function. But this is the rate of potatoes, not how many. Uh, this is in millions of bushels per year, with T being years since the beginning of 1970. So 1970 is the year zero, according to our function. How many bushels were consumed from the beginning of 1972 to the end of 1973? So this is from year two to year four. We're going to integrate this function from two to four to go from the rate of consumption to the amount of potatoes that were uh, consumed. So we have 2.2 plus 1.1 to the t dt. We're going to use our calculator to do this. Uh, the point of this problem is that when you're given the rate of consumption and you want to know how many were consumed, it's integral. So we're going to go math go down to FNINT and we have 2.2 uh, plus 1.1 raised to the t power x in this case. We're using the variable x and we're going from year 2 to year 4. So the amount of potatoes consumed was 7.066 and I believe that is in millions. 7.066 million potatoes were consumed.